everybody. Welcome back. I am Jess. I'm Piper. I'm Chris. How's everybody doing? Good. How are you? I'm good. That's good. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so good. Yeah. Yeah. How are you, Chris? Uh, I'm good. I'm also good. So Was it so good? So good. So good. Mm-hmm. Dan, dan, so good. I yeah. started Blues Brothers and I saw fucking, what's his name in it? James mm-hmm. Brown. Mm-hmm. He was sweating. Dude. I love James He's Brown. He's always sweating. And Shaka Khan is in that too. Yeah. I got halfway through that, and I I don't know how I feel about that movie. <laughs> I like it, but I also, like, it's kind of cringe. Yeah. It's, like, mm-hmm. really ridiculous. Yeah. Ray Charles is fucking in it. Mm-hmm. Urethra Franklin, famously. Yeah, she's sure. also She was the waitress you're, you were doing. Urethra? The, uh, is that what you said? What is it? Aretha. Aretha? <laughs> I put Aretha on my oh door my uh, during God. Christmas. <laughs> That's Chris's. That's Chris's drag name. Yeah. Urethra yeah. <laughs> it was gonna be Sharon Needles. Well, did I tell you that I picked my stripper name? It's the. It's Cherry Seinfeld. The Don. No, that's great. It's, it's Cherry Seinfeld. Cherry Sein. I like yeah. that. That's cool. I'll come out to like the, yeah. the Seinfeld theme. I'll be wearing a puffy shirt. Nice. You know. Ribs would be rib cage. Like that's perfect. Like rib his, cage? if he had a show name, if he was in the adult <laughs> industry. I think mine would be uh, Dick Logger. <laughs> like the beer. Like the beer. Yeah. Yeah. Because that kind of sounds like yeah. I'm into poop stuff. We're going to work on it. Yeah. You know, I don't, we want, can, we I don't have... want the last name Logger. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm in that industry. It's a little suggestive. Wait, like I think you like dressed like a, like a lumberjack. Yeah. <laughs> like, like the brawny man. Yeah. yeah. He's throwing paper towels. I might as well bring them. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All you ladies are going to need these. Shit. Oh my God. Yeah. But, Piper, uh, I don't know what yours will be, you sweet little innocent baby. Yeah. I mean, Pipe is already kind of suggestive. We're not. Her father listens to this show. Oh. Well, it suggests she's a plumber. Yeah. Duh. You know, that's pretty cool. That's a cool yeah. line of work. People need, yeah. we need plumbers. Yeah. 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 Especially if you got a logger in the house. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> I also watched True Romance. You did. <laughs> that was amazing. Yeah. Uh, have you seen that? You've seen it, right? I have. It's no. been a long time. Though. I need to. I need to watch that, though. You'll like it. What was the other movie I told you to watch earlier? Saltburn. Well, there was, uh, I'm not going to watch Saltburn. Yeah, it was fucking sick. You told sick. me to watch uh, Saltburn and Frankenhooker. There was a... No, there was like a... No, okay, whatever. It Have you seen It Follows, though? Did we talk about that? Yes. Okay. Yeah, the STD movie. Yeah. Yes. I love I feel those. like... I'm going to bone you to death. To death. <laughs> yeah. Fuck you to death. <laughs> <laughs> it's like uh, Mr. Garrison. Well, you don't know. You don't watch South Park, right? I have, yeah. Yeah, Mr. Garrison. Times. That was like yeah. one of his policies when he was running. Yeah. You're going to fuck him to death. <laughs> You're the uh, enemy. <laughs> Fuck him to death. Oh, my God. <laughs> you can't say fucking school, Kyle. <laughs> oh, my God. I love that show, dude. I don't know. If, like, the new season of True Detective started. I haven't watched it yet. Mm-hmm. I've been hearing a lot about that, honestly. Did you see any season? No. All? Watch the very first season. It is amazing. I'm, um for some reason, I'm a part of this friend or this, like, group on Facebook for the, the movie The Thing. And there's, like, people post their okay. art, you know, fan art, sculptures. Sure. And they've been show, sharing, like, images from that, I guess, the most recent season and how mm-hmm. there's parallels to the thing. Is it, like, a paranormal fucking show, like the X-Files? Apparently, there's, like, some ghosty things. I haven't seen it yet. It looks so, dope. I mean, it looks I, cool. I, because we're so spoiled with being able to, like, binge watch things, mm-hmm. that, like, going episode, like, one a week, like, I'm, like, mm. mm-hmm. So, I'm kind of, like, stockpiling them a little bit. I want to be able to watch, like, three of them in a row. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, like, three shows? Like, yeah, or, like three yeah. episodes. Oh, three episodes, I have this see you. weird but, thing where I have to finish a show as soon mm-hmm. as possible. And, like, so, like, by the third season, I'm, like, burnt out. And I'm, like, the show's not interesting anymore. Well, <laughs> like, you can kind of, like, like, no, my thing that I do, which is awful, is I, if I get into a show that, um, like, was around for a long time. Like, let me give you an example. Uh, everyone was like, oh, that show Big Love was so good. It was so good. I was like, oh, all right, fine. I'll watch it. I got into, like, the first season. I was like, oh, my God, I love it so much. And then I like to – I went on, like, Wikipedia, and I will read each episode, sh- like, what happens. You, like, you I, ruin I, I it for spoil, I ruin it for myself to where I don't want to finish. Oh, my God. Because I know what happens. Get a grip. I did the same thing with Six Feet, uh, Six Feet Under. I've heard that's okay. Mm-hmm. That's actually really good. But like yeah. that rule is like an exception if it's something that I'm like disgustingly hyper fixated over. No, I get it. Like, like, like I watched Gotham all the way through. Like New Girl. I was I, just when like. I found, when I watched started New Girl, yeah. I watched it like completely all the way uh-huh. through. And then, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. I binged Lost. Like when I watched Lost yeah. or Breaking Bad. I mean, I, I binged a lot of shows. Seinfeld. Mm-hmm. Like 
but it was kind of like background noise. Like I wasn't really like I was watching it, but I would watch the same episode like three times because yeah. mm-hmm. I kept missing it. I was like, it's funny. I'll fucking pop my head up when <sighs> I'm like not paying Seinfeld. attention, and it's, it's so great. Do you watch Curb? I I need to. I don't think I have anything you... that that's on. It's on Max. Is it on Max? Yeah. Oh, I think I might have it. Oh, it is. I'll check it out. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I started Veep today. Veep? Which, oh, yeah. Julia which, I need to renew my Hulu subscription Flop. because I went to go watch something and well, it was I just have... like, well, you need to pay us. Well, I, 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 have, I have one. I'll give them, mm. give them a promotion. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> we share. <laughs> <laughs> I'll put that in reverse in the post. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You yeah. just like beat me out the whole time. <laughs> my my social security number is. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I had to beep out one of the things. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah. I didn't have to, but it was funny. It was yeah. funny. Mm-hmm. But like, imagine uh, I'm just like, fuck you, you fucking piece of shit. You like, pig, beep, you beep, fucking beep, pig beep, cunt. <laughs> yeah, you fucking, <laughs> well, you like, fucking dickhead. Well, that SpongeBob episode where like, it's like they're cursing. Um, The actors actually... Like use the real curse words because they tried to like replace it uh-huh. like with, with like fork or whatever. It's so but it didn't like, seem what if natural like, that though. Never, just, never yeah. is. <laughs> and I was like, and it randomly just was like, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Beep. yeah. What if I said? <laughs> uh, but even in Soul Plane, I don't know if you remember, there was a scene where uh, someone is explaining, I guess, what was going on, and they said Saddam at the time mm-hmm. ate a dick. <laughs> but on TV, but on TV they said uh, Saddam ate a dog. I love it's so. Lo- I live for that. Like I was watching Wedding Crashers, <laughs> and the guy um, instead of calling someone an asshole, he's like, "You armhole." I was like, oh. so fucking funny, man. Cheese and rice instead of. It's cheese like and they make rice. a ransom yeah. note. They take like audio from like a different scene of the movie, mm-hmm. and they put mm-hmm. it there. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? Well, like the writing in the first season of Van Helsing was like a little bit like what because the. Like, tough guy, military man says frick instead of fuck in one of the scenes. And I'm like, like don't even just don't even I, I'm like, yeah, don't I'm, even like yeah. I, I'm like, I think the tough military guy wouldn't give a shit what he says. If he's a like, tough, if he, <laughs> yeah, like if he's a tough military guy and he's like, nah, I don't curse. Like, he's a Marine. I'd be like, damn, fuck like, you're, that. You're, 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 you're flipping mean. Like, don't, don't even, don't even say it. Yeah. Just, just, just don't even write just, it in. You don't have to write it in. These fucking people. Like, That's how I, like what you're like, your tough guy light. Mm-hmm. I swear to God. Like, I, don't <laughs> I have a theory about some of these movies. I don't know if I said yeah. it on the show before, but it's like, I feel like these directors and these producers and these writers, they get in a room, Ooh, they, they fucking do a, a mound of Adderall and Coke and they just chatter, chatter, chatter. And they're just like, yeah, write that down. Yeah, write that down. And then you have all these fucking movies that are psychotic. And yeah, maybe Coke helps a lot uh-huh. of good movies in the past, like during the yeah. 70s and 80s and shit. But yeah. Uh, I I, Sometimes I see these movies and I'm like, who's on fucking drugs? Seriously. Uh, yeah. You know, personally. Yeah. Go see Extra Believer. And you'll, you'll oh, no. No, don't do, do that. Not, don't do that. That is like, that is the biggest display of no chemistry I've seen in a while in movies. I want to see, apparently there was another orphan movie. It's like a oopsie daisy. Oh, you saw the second one? No, I saw the first one. Okay. It's raining donuts. It's okay. <laughs> is that what that was? Yeah, it was like, it's okay. We'll I think get it rolled down we'll the street. There's no dog oh, in here. We're no. fine. Yeah, Ali will get it. I would marry these donuts. Yeah. Would you like one? No, I, you're, yeah. I, I, I shoved one in your face yeah, before. I was, I was trying to fix the mics, do my job, and I got us fucking assaulted. I just don't want to. <laughs> just, I, think she, I think I broke a you tooth. Got, you got a sweeted. <laughs> yeah, I got a sweeted. Um, I forgot what I was going to say. No, oh, I no. got a frosted. Aww. <laughs> you got a rich frosted. I got a rich frosted. Um, They're very good. I, I changed my name, by the way. It's Rich Frosted. Rich Frosted. Uh, my Def- stripper name. Oh, beautiful. Yeah. Okay. Go on. Definitely. Yeah. Rich Frosted Ho Nut. Richard Frosted. <laughs> yeah. What did you say? Rich Frosted Ho Nut. Ho Nut. Yeah. Yeah. Who do you think puts the holes in all those donuts? <laughs> <laughs> okay. No, but um, Orphan. I only saw the first one, like recently. Um, it was really good. Mm-hmm. It was good. Oh, the Orphan. Yeah. Orphan. Yeah. I that was, was like, a twist. I'll tell you what. I, know. I didn't expect it. Oh, when she came out with like all that makeup on, I was like, ugh, oh. ugh, stop Dude, it. Dude, have you seen? It is, and it is so far fetched to be like, oh, like she had scars from like her straight jackets. Spoiler alert, Lauren. Yeah. Um, but I'm like, get the fuck out of here. Yeah. But it's just like it's, it was still really good. I would definitely rewatch it. I yeah. want to see. There's apparently like an origin story for her. Really. Like another movie. I think it's first. It's not First Blood. 
Is that first one? First kill. I think that was first the... kill. Mm-hmm. First kill. Why does first blood sound familiar? What is that? I thought of blood sport when you said that. First blood. Oh, maybe uh, Rambo? Rambo. I think that's yeah. what it is. Rambo first blood. It's the same thing. Same they concept. First blood. Yeah, it's the same concept. Yeah. It's fine. Uh, um, but I liked it. I thought it was crazy when they yeah. killed the lady from the shield with a hammer. The nun. Oh. Yeah. Was it sister? Sister act. Sister act. Yeah. It was whoopee. Yeah. Whoopee, whoopee from the shield. Remember that TikTok I showed you? Yeah. <laughs> Oh, the, like, when the guy's like, in a, like he's doing the nun yes. scene. Yes, he, he did every Christ. character. Oh I watched God. the sister act in like math class. Uh huh. The sister act. Yeah. Yeah. One time, and I only remember like two vague scenes from it. Yeah. It was like a fever dream. It was something the teacher threw on last minute. Yeah. Mm-hmm. They were like, "We have nothing else like, to do." I like, guess it's wholesome. Yeah, we found this well, in the closet. Watch this. <laughs> yeah. uh, the, I remember the bald kid hitting the high note. That's what I remember. And I remember her flying. Mm-hmm. I remember, uh, I remember the scene where she fucking shoves a fucking <laughs> <laughs> wrong one. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh my god. Yeah, a lot of movies. <sighs> this week. I also watched the uh, Gary Oldman Dracula. That was dope. But mm-hmm. we don't have to talk about movies and whatever you want. I don't remember. Well, I'm just saying. You know, if you yeah. really want to talk about movies all night, I mean, it's fucking. Oh, you know. it's hot in here. Is it? Yeah. She's taking her skin off currently. She's, she's, <laughs> a, she's a zipper underneath her hair. She pulls. Yeah. And no, girls the lizard just, pops out. Girls just shed their skin. Yeah. I mean, yeah. like laughing. Yeah. I'm that that sounds like a Tumblr post. Like a would be like a sunflower in black and white, and it'd be like women shed their skin. Well, there was actually this like fake disease, things. um, where fibromyalgia. Yeah. We're, no. We're. <laughs> <laughs> Which, what was it? It was a fake disease where like women who had purple eyes like at birth wouldn't menstruate or whatever yeah it was like this fake disease going around on tumblr for a while oh it was like like, okay back in the early days of tumblr purple eyes Mm -hmm. they wish that'd be be like fucking crazy looking yeah you know and that's even crazier like when people have two different color eyes my friend that's so is it like extreme though is it like it's two different shades of green but it's like is it obvious or is it if kind of look at her. i had yeah. i had cool. a friend in high school who's when i was blue and when i was brown that would be distracting yeah. mm-hmm. i don't know which one to look at that, who was dan Aykroyd married to um i don't know uh wasn't like a uh, i could have swore she had fucking two different color eyes mm. oh you know who does too like uh kate bosworth gary Busey. Yeah. oh that might have been her i think it might have been kate bosworth she was definitely not married you to don't dan think Aykroyd. so uh 100 not pretty, he was in conehead i know Shit. I know. What if she wanted to put that little crown on? See I mean, what, see what no, happens. nothing's stopping her from doing it anytime. That's true. You don't think it was Kate mm-hmm. Bosworth? No. Uh, I think, I don't I don't know. I don't know. You think she would go after Chevy Chase first? I hear he's such a dick. Yeah. But he's, you know. What if he's just trying to be funny and everyone just thinks he's being a dickhead, but he's just trying to be, no, trying to make himself know. laugh? I don't know. Like, like me? fuck you. Yeah, he's like, That's kind of, my whole persona on Twitter. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, um, one guy and he was like trying to flirt with me or whatever. And then like a couple months after the fact, he messaged me again and he was like, when I was trying to flirt with you, did I have a chance? Like, no, if you have to ask that, what? no. <laughs> yeah. Like one guy, um, posted a picture and he's like, uh, he immediately messaged me and was like, oh, my friend, you know, I was going to argue with my friends because I don't think septum rings are hot, but I like yours. I'm like, I love a backhanded compliment. Thank you so much. He's like, what? And I was serious. Like, no, no, it's it's all good. I'm like, I love taking, you know, criticism from a man who does not even have a picture in his avatar. For real? Like, was he criticizing you? It's just, it, it was like, like, why? His friends, if anything, his friends seem to No, her. but why do you need to point out, like, I normally don't like that, but I, yeah. it looks good. It's like, okay, it's good like for It's like prefacing you. a compliment with the fact that, like, everyone else might think contrary to the like, compliment I, you're about to give. Like, yeah. It's like, what are you doing? You know what I'm saying? What is this? I'm like, thanks. It's like, Mike, thanks, some Chief. people might think you're un- ugly, but I think you're attractive. It's like, what? <laughs> it's like, you're fucking out of your mind? Uh, yeah. I'm dry. Bye. Anywho. Yeah. That's enough of a DM corner. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, DM corner. No, oh, I. You guys okay. should be the DM coroners. DM coroners. Yes. Oh well, I have a good one. Yeah. All the freaking. How long have graves? we been going already? Uh, this is seventeen. Okay, I actually have one that's gold. Okay. Piper. Mm-hmm. You're saying gold. Yeah. Hang on. Actually, wait. I think I want Chris to to help me. Okay. I need a man to be the man. 
Um, all right, so you will be him. Well, let's not say his name. All right, his name is... Um, Voldemort. It's probably not even a real person. <laughs> Jake Busey. His name... Yeah. His name is Jake Busey. All right, go ahead. All right. Hey, do you take uh, Venmo by chance? Happy face? Why, you want to go split skis on a pizza? Haha. <laughs> Pizza does uh, pizza does sound good right now. I can't from this angle. It's fucking me up. Okay, here, I'll do it this way. Pizza, okay. pizza sounds uh sounds good right now. That and sending money to pretty women is a kink of mine. Oh. Well, this is early. Yeah. Oh, really? Yup. How much? Depends, in the person and the vibe. A little here and there. Well, I'm gonna need a very large lump sum so I can reach my goal. Your goal? opening a human taxidermy shop. <laughs> and then about 16 crying face emojis <laughs> with no text. Yeah. Oh, I need to act fast. Meemaw isn't going to last forever unless I get to work. Meemaw is dead. Sad faced. Rip. Very. So sorry for your loss. Unfortunately, I don't have the funds for that. How much was he planning on fucking sending? I have no a idea. A fiver? I could keep her sitting in her favorite chair forever with your help. I'll have to rob a bank, dot, 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 or two. She's starting to smell, so I need help fast. I don't know. I'm scared. Death is natural. Nothing to be scared of. <laughs> Unless it's the way Mima went. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> how, how did she die? Walked right into oh, the wait. fucking trap. She got in the way. <laughs> okay. She got in the way of me swinging at a pinata. I was using an axe. Work smarter, not harder. Uh. <laughs> oh my god. Now let's see Paul Allen's pinata. Yeah. <laughs> so you're a murderer? Dot, dot, dot. Not according to the district attorney. <laughs> <laughs> and now want me to be your accomplice in taxidermy. The DA is a liar. <laughs> you a cold-blooded killer. With an axe to grind. Dot, dot, dot. The DA is my dad. He said it's fine. It wasn't his mom. <laughs> Praying hands. Good luck with that. You going to help me or not? LOL. A good boy would. I don't have a lot of time. Uh, what is that? A sweating emoji? Yeah. He's sweating. Great redirects here. Quite impressive. Oh, so he's privy, huh? Impressive, he will be privy? A nice, yeah. Impressive will be a nice man like yourself helping me turn Mima into a family family heirloom. Oh my god. Wow. I will even send you a lock of her hair as a thank you. I don't know what to say. You're involved now. You know what you've done. No, you're involved now. You know what I've done. Not necessary. I'm not into voodoo. Just put me out of my misery. <laughs> what the <laughs> Fuck. Shall I preserve you for the enjoyment of future generations? Why not? Clearly, I love torture. I will pose you in bed. <laughs> huh? He I says. Will, I will pose you in bed with my pop up. His boyfriend wasn't able to be preserved. Spoiler alert: You're the little spoon. Ha ha ha! I can take it. Wink, is that winky face? Yeah. Well, pop up is still alive. He just misses his boyfriend. <laughs> That's okay. I'll be the BF. You sure? Pop up of Zim the Mouse Traps. LMAO, I don't know how to respond. And the sweating, the sweating. The things I hear from under his bed. Like, <laughs> 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 LOL rip, sad face. <laughs> uh, I don't think I want to know, slant face. Lots and lots of metal snapping against skin. <laughs> Skip? I, 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 yeah, sorry. <laughs> Oh, I spent, I, yeah, I went lots and lots of metal snapping against Skip, and then he went, Skip, I went, sorry, skin. I have formaldehyde all over my hands. It's slippery. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, uh, sweating emoji, good to know. Okay, okay, you're a good sport. Sorry for serving on you a little and wanting to send you money. Oh, perving. He perving. What was, per oh, serving? Uh, yeah. You were like, serving, all right. I was like, are you going to help me or not? Time is of the essence. Hello, I can't help you with the taxidermy. I can help you with coffee or cute outfits or something instead. Okay, so coffee. Uh, Coffee's yeah. fucking $2. I, what else I, only you got? Wear, yeah. I only wear coveralls because of the work I do. Blood and shit will ruin my clothes. <laughs> Sad face. Sounds like a rough life. 
The rats keep me company. <laughs> Since Meemaw has gone quiet. Well, I'm glad you're happy. <laughs> they said you, you said the rats kept you company, not happy. I know. I'm glad you're happy. If you love what you do, it's never work. Amen, Jessica. Uh, do you play a character every time a random messages you? Character. LOL. That's so insulting, Craig. After everything... Oh, whatever. It doesn't matter. Bleep it. We'll be, I mean, it doesn't, you know what? It doesn't matter. After everything I've shared with you. Oh, yeah? You'd never say a facetious thing in your life, huh? Absolutely not. My axe game is on point. Good to know! <laughs> <laughs> Did he type that in caps? Yeah. Well, no, oh it's just uh, three exclamations. Wish you had an Amazon wish list. You should, you, like, you gotta have one lined up now for I this should. future. I go, well, now I'm mad at you. Why? You know what you did. I saw the way you looked at her. LOL, if you say so. You love me? Ha ha ha, do I? Do you? Her? <laughs> what? What? <laughs> <laughs> Don't think we have met. I saw you with her. Picks her, it didn't happen. <laughs> you were acting so guilty, babe. I don't have to prove anything to you or that floozy. Oh, he's been counterattacked. You've ruined us. <laughs> what can I do to make it up to you? I can't trust you anymore. Sad face. I'm sorry, but I have to go. And then the, the Celine Dion on yeah, the Titanic. Yeah, Celine Dion at the, the, what is that, the cockpit? Yeah. The, the bow? Yeah. Ugh. Okay. I am sad. You could have been the king to my human taxidermy empire. Damn. Too bad. I would have named it Craigie's Corpse Crew. <laughs> <laughs> All I wanted to do was Venmo, Venmo that booty for existing, too. I'm too hurt. I need to go pop-pop meat spooning. LMAO, okay. Farewell. I'll be watching you. LOL, okay. <laughs> and then, yeah. And then he said, I'm going to come to your house with a big knife. No, he didn't say that. I'm just kidding. <laughs> that was... That brought me so much joy. DM Corner. That's awesome. Yes. Nice. I'm hitting the vape on I was that was going for a while, and I, I was just laying in bed, just like cackling. Just like he was <laughs> a good sport. He was a good sport. He yeah. He almost won. Well, I I posted like a selfie like a few weeks later of it was like a bathing suit thing, and he's like, "Can I please send you money?" And I'm like, ten thousand dollars <laughs> or nothing. Or don't talk to me ever again." He's like, "I'm sorry." Shit. <sighs> if you really want a lady, um, when she won't bang you, you just tell her you're gonna kill yourself. It yeah, it works every time. I don't. Yeah. That, is that no. terrible? Is that terrible? It, it, a little bit. A little bit. Uh, don't do that, fellas. Do no. not do that. You're sick in the head if you do that shit. <laughs> Kill yourself if uh. Kill her with the bangle, If the Bengals lose. Yeah. Or uh, you know, Betty when oh she's already dead. Uh, oh, God damn. Let's say Betty White. Yeah, fuck off. I forgot she died. They All couldn't right. bring her to like Mongolia, like fucking uh, Andy Kaufman, give her the treatment. Yeah. Yeah. Well, he's we still, don't know it works. He's still alive. Yeah, but that's why. That's where. That's what cured he, him. He's with Tupac. He's probably still there. He's probably like, this place is fucking magic. Yeah. Probably never came back. Probably not. You know? I still, I love Man on the Moon. Yeah. But that, I that know. fade sequence I know. is so. I should have warned you. Like bothersome. Like when I saw that, You're, I was physically taken aback. I was like, why would you? That was like the most devastating yeah. framing of a death that I've ever seen in a fucking movie. Yeah. And it was like so, it, it was like really depressing, like really fucking depressing because like right before that moment, they show him realize that, that like, it's there's, full of shit that he's, he's, it's, he's gone. Yeah. And then it just, oh my God, man. I was I like, know. are you fucking kidding I me, know. man? That fucked me up. I'm sorry. No, no, it's, I mean, hey, it's part of the movie. It's, I respect it, but like, I, I was like, I you really have to fucking do this to me? I'm sorry. You know? But then at the end, they kind of give you the, the, the glimmer of hope that mm. maybe he is still alive because they're all at, um, watching like Tony Clifton and stuff. And then you still see Bob out, like Bob was sitting with, um, fucking Courtney Love and mm -hmm. Danny DeVito and all mm -hmm. that. So it's just like, then who is being Tony? That is crazy. So, yeah. Because, yeah. I mean, he faked a fucking neck injury. So why would he not, you know, go that fucking crazy? That was not crazy? fake. No, oh, that's a good point. I fucked up. That was not fake. Well, I was quoting uh, the king. Yeah. I was quoting Law Jerry, sure. Jerry Lawler. Sure. Right? Was he the king? I, I guess, oh. yeah. Yeah, that movie fucked me up, man. That was, that was a good <sighs> movie. But uh, do you want to swap? You want to go back? To yeah, your, let's, sure. uh, let's get the ball rolling yeah, here. Yeah, I got I to walk. Give me my jewel. <laughs> get Sorry. Where's my jewel? I'll take Julia Stiles back, please. Thank you. <laughs> I like that. Is that her name? 
it's either Julia Stiles, Julie, it's, I've called it Julia Child. She was in the uh-huh. last pod. Juliette Lewis. <laughs> Juliette uh, Lewis. It just depends on my mood. Have you seen The Forgotten? No. That movie's fucking nuts. Mm-mm. If you guys have seen that, they'll know what I'm talking about. Sure, they most certainly will. I can help you find your son. You gotta watch it. It's a, it's the movie, like, the first fucking half of the movie, you're like, okay, this lady can't find her son. Like, this is kind yeah. of bizarre. Everyone's convincing her she never had a son in the first place. Mm-hmm. Then this lady, who, like, takes her case and, like, starts looking around, and she's like, wait, this is fucking weird. She's fucking, she's, like, walking up to her on, like, a jetty near a lighthouse because she's mm-hmm. been looking for her because she's been driving around trying to find her kid. She's about to tell her she knows, like, wh- where to find her son. And something happens to her. I don't want to spoil it. But I'll show you the clip you if you'd I'm like. You know I'm going to go home and like read the entire plot of the movie. I mean, I don't know if they'll describe that part I'll because it, it's not. thing. It's so fuck. Well, let's just say she fucking flies away. Sure. Okay. She what? fucking, she's, a, she's, she's like, I know where to find your son. And she just gets zipped. Like flies the fuck away. And, and then, uh, well, no, it's maybe it's uh, uh, Julianne Moore. All right. Oh my God. It's nuts. Okay. It's fucking nuts. You got to watch it. It's crazy. <laughs> this bitch can't find her son. Some lady's on the case. She zips up into the sky. And then now there's something else going on. It's... Oh. It sounds like a fever dream. Not... It's crazy. <laughs> oh, my God. Is that, was that uh, overwhelming? Yeah. So, a little bit. I'm a little... I'm a little anxious now. <laughs> no. You don't um, want to fly away on the way home? Oh, God. Um, so, you know, February is the month for lovers. Yes. So, we figure we would kick it off with... The most notorious of couples. We are going to do Bonnie and Clyde. Yep. Mmm. Bonnie and Clyde. Yes. What do you know? What do you think um, happened? They had a Volkswagen Beetle. Uh, they had Tamagans. They robbed the banks. Yeah. They were perhaps in love, but they were definitely business partners of some sorts. Uh, they died in a fucking blazing mm-hmm. firefight, right? Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. there's like the classic shot up car. Actually, sidebar. Mm-hmm. There's a movie called The Highwaymen. The Highwaymen? It's on Netflix. It's uh, Kevin Costner and Woody Harrelson. They play the two cops who like kind of found them and oh, shit. like organized the whole ambush and stuff. It is, yeah, I started watching it today, but then I fell asleep. I gotta mm-hmm. finish Natural Born Killers because is that kind of similar to the case? Me. It's like a man and a woman. They're just fucking hopped up, just driving yeah, around. But we will, uh, we'll tell you all about it. Okay. Yes. Buckle up, sweetheart. All right. So I did uh, like their early life and their first meeting. So I take the reins on this one. All right. So Bonnie Elizabeth Parker was born on October 1st, 1910 in Rowena, Texas. Bonnie was a middle child, and her father, Charles, was a bricklayer. When Bonnie was four years old, her father died, and her mother, Emma, moved their, moved, her, moved her family back to Cement City. The city was not a city, but an industrial suburb in, in West Dallas. Emma worked as a seamstress there. As an adult, Bonnie was a poet. She wrote The Story of Suicide Sal and The Trail's End. The Trail's End is commonly known nowadays as The Story of Bonnie and Clyde. Bonnie was also a fan of romance novels. Okay. In Bonnie's sophomore year of high school, she met Roy Thornton, and after dropping out of school, they married on September 25th, 1926. This was six days before her 16th birthday. They were practically high school sweethearts, and Bonnie even got a Roy and Bonnie tattoo above her right knee to commemorate the marriage. The marriage was short-lived, however, as it was bruised by a tumultuous energy, Roy's frequent absences, and brushes with the law. Though never divorcing legally, their paths never crossed again after January of 1929. As for Roy Thornton, he was sentenced to five years for robbery in 1933, and after many attempts to break out of various prisons, he was killed on October 3rd, 1937 at Huntsville State Prison while trying to escape from there as well. Um, after separating from Thornton, Bonnie moved back to her mother's home and worked as a waitress in Dallas. In 1929, an 18-year-old Bonnie kept a diary, briefly, that detailed her feelings of loneliness, impatience with her life in Dallas, and her love of photography. Mm. So, this is Clyde's early life. Um, Clyde Chestnut Barrow 
which is a hell of a name, uh, was born on March 24th, 1909 in Ellis County, Texas. Ellis County is southeast of Dallas, and Clyde was the fifth child out of seven. Clyde's family was, was a poor farming family, and his father's name was Henry, and his mother's name was Cummy. And, yeah. <laughs> Wait a second. Back it up. <laughs> yeah. I had to look up how to pronounce that because I was like, you, you, "There's no fucking way," yeah. and it, and there was a way. That's <laughs> was, that's okay. <laughs> huh? Yeah, but in the 1920s, uh, the Barrow family moved to Dallas as part of the wider migration pattern for the from the more rural areas of Texas to the major cities. Mm. Um, most families would have settled down in the slums of West Dallas, and the Barrow family was not an exception to the rule. They spent their first few months living under the wagon until they could afford to purchase a tent for the family to reside in instead. Oh my God. Um, Clyde's first arrest took place in 1926 when he was 17. The police had confronted him about a rental car, which he had not returned on time. Soon after that encounter, Clyde had another brush with the law as this at Clyde had another brush with the law, this time with his brother, Buck. This arrest was for being in possession of stolen turkeys. What? Yeah. These, these, these like arrests are so funny to me. Like, cause. Like a stolen rental yeah. car or yeah. in fucking, what was it? 22? 1922? Yeah. It's like, it's like Gotham city villain behavior. Yeah. Like cars just came out and you're stealing already. You're fucking, yeah. like, give um, them a minute. Though, uh, but through 1927 to 1929, Clyde had legitimate legal jobs, but he was also at the same time partaking in illegal activity. He was cracking safes, robbing stores, and stealing cars. In January of 1930 is when Bonnie and Clyde were said to first meet, but the circumstances around their first meeting vary depending on what source you're reading from. In the January 1930 meeting, it was at the home of Clyde's friend, Clarence Clay. Um, in the following weeks, Bonnie and Clyde were said to spend a lot of time together, but the romance was interrupted when Clyde had yet another run-in with the law with law enforcement. He was arrested by Dallas County Sheriff's Deputy Bert Wishand for auto theft. Paul Blart. Yeah. <laughs> Um, in April of 1930, at the age of 21, Clyde was sent to East Ham Prison Farm. Shortly after his incarceration, he escaped using a weapon that Bonnie had smuggled to him. Um, the weapon is a gun. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he was... He was later recaptured and sent back to jail, however. Um... Just going on forward, there's a brief mention of sexual assault coming up. Um, just throwing it out there. So if that's something that makes you uncomfortable, feel warning, free to skip it. Warning, ahead. R word. Um, warning. But, um, however, in jail um, at East Ham, Clyde was repeatedly sexually assaulted. Um, and one day he decided to fight back against his abuser and crushed his skull with a pipe. This marked the first time that Clyde had ever murdered someone. Clyde did get away with this murder, however, as an inmate who was already serving a life term took the fall for him. Aw. Shit. Yeah, like, oh, I got you. Yeah. yeah. Like, what, like, what else are they going like, to do? Bro. Yeah. Clyde had purposely amputated two of his toes to avoid hard labor in the fields in January of 1932. What a lazy bitch. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I don't wanna. Shit. I know no wanna. Yeah. Ouch. <laughs> you know, my toes. Um, walk their own. I'm an indoor boy. Yeah. yeah I'm indoor. I'll, I can sweep. Yeah. I'll sweep. <laughs> I'll clean the bathroom. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'll swap the deck. I'll cook food. <laughs> Um, it is unknown if he did this to himself or if another inmate helped him. Due to the amputation, Clyde walked with a limp for the rest of his life, and the amputation uh, the amputation turned out to not be needed because Clyde's mother had successfully petitioned for his release, and Clyde was unaware of this and was released six days later. On- oh my god! Yeah. <laughs> what a dumb fuck! <laughs> <laughs> Oh Jesus my god. Christ. 
On February 2nd, 1932, he was paroled from East Ham. After his time in prison, Clyde was described as a quote-unquote hardened and bitter criminal. His sister Marie was quoted as saying, something awful sure must have happened to him in prison because he wasn't the same person when he got out. And a fellow inmate, Ralph Fultz, said that he watched Clyde change from a schoolboy to a rattlesnake. The gruel. Yeah. <laughs> he went in with ten toes and then <laughs> yeah. left with less. And he didn't even have to. He didn't have to. He, he went from like, you got to get me out of here to, dude, no, I got to stay. Yeah. Just put my fucking toes Clyde, off. you're doing too much. <laughs> Come on. You're so extra. You're so extra. You're doing too much. <laughs> Oh my that's, that's God. That's actually one of the funniest things I've heard in a while. <laughs> that's, that should have been on the dumb criminal just for like an honorable mention. Yeah. Because that's so extreme. What a bozo. Um, but, <laughs> but after East Ham, Clyde robbed grocery stores and gas stations. He robbed so many that the rate far outpaced the 10 or so bank robberies that attributed him to the Barrow Gang, which Jess will talk about more in just a minute. Um... Clyde had a favorite weapon, which was the M1918 Browning Automatic Rifle, or the BAR for short. Um, According to John Neal Phillips, uh, Clyde's goal in life was to not gain fame or fortune for his crimes, but rather to get back at the Texas prison system for the abuse he sustained while serving his time. I never knew any of this. Mm -hmm. I I Mm -hmm. thought it was just... You know, shoot, you never catch me alive. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like, just, just... But like, but like reading that, I like kind of jokingly said, like, God forbid a man has hobbies. Like, <laughs> <laughs> like, like... slay. But, um, yeah. But like stated before, uh, the circumstances of Bonnie and Clyde's first encounter vary. Uh, the most credible account of their first meeting was the encounter at Clarence Clay's house. Clyde was 20 and Bonnie was 19. Um, Another encounter that entails Bonnie uh, and Clyde's meeting was that Bonnie was out of work due to a broken arm and was staying at a friend's house for assistance during her recovery. And when Clyde stopped by the house while Bonnie was making hot chocolate, they were smitten immediately. How wholesome. Mm. Right. Which, which like, seems so romanticized. He walked in with a bag of marshmallows. uh, Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) She's, like, no, she's opening all the cupboards and she's like, "What are the yeah. marshmallows?" I have them. <laughs> um, she opens the door and then Dreamweaver plays. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Most historians believe that Bonnie stayed with Clyde and aided in his crimes because she had fallen in love with him. Don't we all? Right. Mm-hmm. So Chocolate my man, source, she's a ride or die bitch. Yes, she, she died riding. Maybe that's where that comes from. Well, oh, actually, a- actually, in slang. Um, like, you know, like all the freaking prison groupies, like, like with Ted Bundy and everything, yeah. like, well, the, like, there's a term for it, like hyperstophilia. And then there's like, and it's like, and then it's like, um, the slang term for it is Bonnie and Clyde syndrome, which really comes. Okay. Yeah. Um, but yeah, my sources were Wikipedia and uh, Texas State Historical Association online. <laughs> Crazy. Way to go! I don't know that took yep. place in Texas. If you asked me Texas. where it was, I would have said like fucking. No, I probably would have said Texas, Massachusetts. It's <laughs> in fucking Maine. Yeah. Or Florida. Uh, that would either be that or Florida, probably. Yeah. yeah. I was uh the funniest thing on the way over here. Uh, I heard someone on the radio, and he was like, he's playing a bunch of songs, like sad songs, like fucking every rose has its thorn, and like remember me from Skid Row. Mm-hmm. He's like, you guys are probably thinking that I'm a I'm a downer tonight. Mm-hmm. Playing all these songs, and then he just goes, uh, uh, "This next one is." And I was fucking dying, bro. I was like, I've never heard that before on the radio. It went on for like probably the length I just did it. No exaggeration. I love it. He was just uh, didn't know what the fuck it's <laughs> like. Say. It was like, so like good. not denying, not yeah. be like he's like, you know, you're right. Uh. He's like. Next, uh, next song is fucking. I don't know. It was Breaking Benjamin or something. Uh, all yeah. right. Well, we're gonna get into the crimes. The crimes. So in 1932, we're going to talk about the early robberies and murders. Um, After Barrow's release from prison in February 1932, he and Ralph Fultz began a series of robberies, primarily of stores and gas stations. Their goal was to collect enough money and firepower to launch a raid against Eastham State or prison. 
mm-hmm. eastern prison whatever his farm or whatever the whatever fuck it, it was is, called yeah. Jesus. i was like i was an eastern state penitentiary <laughs> what was he gonna do let everyone out like um no, I guess he just really didn't like it there. That's where he had to cut off his toes. Well, what was he going to do like, in terms of raiding the place? Because the people that abused him were, like, in the fucking jail. So why would he, like, mm-hmm. let them out? Right? You I don't he, know. You said he was essayed, right? Yeah. yeah. So or maybe like, he was going to go in there and just take out all the, the ones that hurt and cr- him yeah, and then officers. release, yeah. you know. Um, on April 19th, Parker and Fultz were captured in a failed hardware store burglary in Kaufman. In which they had intended to steal firearms. Mm-hmm. Parker was released from jail after a few months when the grand jury failed to indict her. Fultz was tried, convicted, and served time. He never rejoined the gang. Parker wrote poetry to pass the time in Kaufman County Jail and reunited with Barrow within a few weeks of her release. And there are, I'm, I'll try to like, look for some of her poetry. Like, she wanted to be like a star. Like, that was like Girl. one of her things. Yeah. I'm a um, star, please. I'm a star. <laughs> oh, I love that movie. Me too. On April 30th, Barrow was the getaway driver in a robbery in Hillsboro, during which store owner J.N. Butcher was shot and killed. Butcher's wife identified Barrow from police photographs as one of the shooters, although he had stayed inside the car. On August 5th, Barrow, Raymond Hamilton, and Ross Dyer were drinking moonshine at a county at a country dance in Stringtown, Oklahoma, when Sheriff C.G. Maxwell and Deputy Eugene C. Moore approached them in the parking lot. Barrow and Hamilton opened fire, killing Moore and gravely wounding Maxwell. Mm-hmm. Moore was the first law officer whom Barrow and his gang killed. They eventually murdered nine. Oh, my God. Like, yeah. <laughs> oh, murdered nine? Yeah. Like... I didn't know that they did that many. That's pretty, like, that's yeah. fucking mass. Yeah. Yeah. Especially back then. Mm-hmm. On October 11th, they allegedly killed Howard Hall at his store during a robbery in Sherman, Texas, though some historians consider this unlikely. Mm-hmm. W.D. Jones had been a friend of Barrow's since his family since childhood. He joined Parker and Barrow on Christmas Eve 1932 at the age of 16, and the three left Dallas that night. The next day, Christmas Day, 1932, Jones and Barrow murdered Doyle Johnson, a family man, while stealing his car in Temple. Like, Jesus. Yeah. Barrow killed Tarrant County Deputy Malcolm Davis on January 6th, 1933, when he, Parker, and Jones wandered into a police trap set for another criminal. The gang had murdered five people since April. What do you think he was trying to do with all those stolen car parts? Like, build his own super car? Maybe. I don't know. Like, well, was he was going to build a mech suit. Was he like a, was <laughs> he a like fucking, a fucking Sigma male of his time? Like, yeah. He was a Ligma. Uh, <laughs> Ligma. Ligma. Stop male. it. What? Nothing. I thought you were going to say something else. No. Never. <laughs> no. Uh, and I hate that you knew what You knew what I was going to... Yeah. I'm like a 12-year-old boy. Like it's, it's fine. <laughs> Um, on March 22nd, 1933, Clyde's brother, uh, Clyde's brother, Buck, was... Gr- what happened? <laughs> <laughs> oh. Okay, sorry, go ahead. Okay, no. MC. Uh, on March 22nd, 1933, Clyde's brother, Buck, which, like, say that five yeah, times fast. Yeah, Clyde's like, brother, Buck. Um, was granted a full pardon and released from prison... And he and his wife, Blanche, set up housekeeping with Bonnie, Clyde, and Jones in a temporary hideout at 3347 and a half Oak Ridge Drive in Joplin, Missouri. According to family sources, Buck and Blanche were there to visit. They attempted to persuade Clyde to surrender to law enforcement. The group ran loud, uh, alcohol-fueled games late into the night in the quiet neighborhood. Blanche recalled that they... Bought a case of beer a day, which we see that all the time. Like, you kidding me? Yeah. Like, yeah. you babies. Yeah, what is this? You goofball. Call me when you're getting a 175 Tito's every yeah. fucking two days. Like, yeah, I want to see you shaking. Yeah. Stop it. Um, the men came and went noisily at all hours, and Clyde accidentally fired a Browning automatic rifle in the apartment while cleaning it. No neighbors went to the house, but one reported suspicions to the Joplin Police Department. Uh, the police assembled a five-man force in two cars on April 13th to confront what they suspected were boot, uh, bootleggers living at the Oak Ridge Drive address. The Barrow brothers and Jones opened fire, killing Detective Henry, uh, Harry L. McGinnis 
outright and fatally wounding Constable J.W. Harryman. <laughs> Shut up! Come on! <laughs> also, I thought you were going to say Henry Winkle <laughs> before, and I was like, Henry Winkle's a detective? <laughs> he's a time traveler. He's a coach, he's a detective, he's a professor. I knew, he's an, as uh, I saw improv teacher. Harryman coming up, I'm like, he's going to... You saw Harryman like, coming? I saw him coming. <laughs> So no. Harry Man and Cummies were in a oh my God. went to the police. Because <laughs> literally, literally, I was reading like some of the names too, and I, I was know. just like, Chris, you, is gonna, Chris is gonna find this one funny. Yeah. Like, <laughs> like, 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 Jess is probably gonna giggle a little bit There's at no this one. Way. Like, and then I was just like, these With are minutes. such like 1910 names. Yeah. Oh my God. Oh, it's awful. so good. It's so it's good. So good. When's the last time you met a Harry Man? <laughs> You're looking at one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I see. Yeah. Mm. Oh my god, my cheeks. <laughs> All right, so we oriented with Harry Man. <laughs> Parker opened fire with a the B the bar that gun that the I barber. said before. the bar. <laughs> Shut him down his size. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> the Browning automatic rifle. I That's like your cut, G. <laughs> oh my god. Okay, I'll stop. I'll stop. This Christopher. Is just too many. <laughs> okay. Um, so she opened fire with the bars. The others fled, forcing Highway Patrol Sergeant G.B. Collar to duck behind a large oak tree. The thirty caliber bullets from the bar stuck the tree and forced wood splinters into the sergeant's face. Fuck. Yeah. Parker got into the car with the others and they pulled in Blanche from the street where she was pursuing her dog Snowball. Okay. <laughs> snowball god fucking snowball damn it then? snowball yeah i guess so the surviving officers later testified that they had fired only 14 rounds into the conflict one hit jones on the side one struck clyde but was deflected by his suit coat button and one grazed buck after ricocheting off a wall fuck so only 14 shots total were fired at that mm-hmm. time mm-hmm. that's very surprisingly conservative mm-hmm. on the ammunition Nowadays, it's like, yeah, but, swish but, fucking cheese. But people also get in gunfights nowadays because someone said that their favorite color was red and not blue. Yeah. <laughs> True. All right. The group, uh, the group escaped the yeah. police at Joplin, but left behind most of their possessions at the apartment, including Buck's parole papers, three weeks old, a large arsenal of weapons, and a handwritten poem by Bonnie, and a camera with several rolls of undeveloped film. Police de- uh, developed the film at the Joplin Globe and found many photos of Barrow, Parker, and Jones posing and pointing weapons at one another. The Globe sent the poem t- and the fo- uh, photos to over the newswire, including a photo of Parker cl- clenching a cigar in her teeth and a pistol in her hand. The Barrow gang subsequently became front page news throughout America. The photo of Parker posing with the cigar and gun became popular. Jeff Glynn in his book Go Down Together, The True Untold Story of Bonnie and Clyde noted, John Dillinger had matinee idol good looks and pretty boy Floyd had the best possible nickname, but the Joplin photos introduced new criminal superstars with the most titillating trademark of all, illicit sex. Clyde Barrow wow. and Bonnie Parker were wild and young and undoubtedly slept together. Well, duh. Mm-hmm. Like, come on. They probably stunk. Ew. They probably fucking reeked. Maybe. <laughs> I don't know. Well, did they have a house or were they just like always on the road? A lot of times they were on the road, but mm-hmm. there were people that would like put them up and How long stuff. was her escapade in terms of like uh, the year span? I will, okay. I'll let you know. I wasn't uh, sure. Yeah. The group ranged from Texas as far north as Minnesota for the next three months. In May, they tried to rob a bank in Lucerne, Indiana. Robbed the bank in Oka, what is that? Oka, I can't remember. Let me see. Okabana? Okay, yeah, sure. Minnesota. They kidnapped uh, Dillard Darby and Sophie Stone in Ruston, Louis- uh, Louisiana, in the course of stealing Darby's car. This was one of several events between 19- 1932 and 1934 in which they kidnapped police officers or robbery victims. They usually released their hostages far from home, sometimes with money to help them return, which, mm-hmm. that's nice. <laughs> that's, like, well, severance pay. Yeah. Like, sorry about all the torture. Here's mm-hmm. here's a 50. You've yeah, been a good sport. That. Get yourself something nice. Thanks. <laughs> yeah. So McDonald's down the street. Here's yeah. looking at you, kid. Yeah. Yeah. 
Stories of such encounters made headlines, as did the more violent episodes. The Barrow Gang did not hesitate to shoot anyone who got in their way, whether it was a police officer or an innocent civilian. Other members of the gang who committed murder included Hamilton, Jones, Buck, and Henry Methvin. Hmm. Got anything for that one? I plead the fifth. Okay. Okay. Eventually, the cold-bloodedness of their murders opened the public eyes to the real the reality of their crimes and led to their ends. The photos entertained the public for a time, but the gang was desperate and discontented, as described by Blanche in her account written while imprisoned in the late 1930s. With their new notoriety, their daily lives became more difficult as they tried to evade discovery. Restaurants and motels became less secure. They resorted to campfire cooking and bathing in cold streams. There you go. See, they... they cold streams? They, yeah. Yeah. They, mm-hmm. You know, hey. Whatever works. You gotta do what you gotta do. The unrelieved around-the-clock proximity of five people in one car gave rise to vicious bickering. Jones was the driver when he and Barrow stole a car belonging to Darby in late April, and he used that car to leave the others. He stayed away until June 8th. Could you imagine back then, like, there was no... Was there a radio in those cars? Like, it's just... I'm the who fuck? I didn't even... Like, you're just there with your thoughts. People smell. Yeah. Like, oh, you get cranky. Stinks. Like, you know... Like, you can't be like, you're you driving play a license plate game? Like, there's there's none of that. Yeah. Like, yellow there's, car. There's no, yeah. there's no uh, Wii Switch. But there's no GameCast. Um, Punch buggy. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> when you said they phoned police, I was like, I expected, like, the, the neighbor to, like, see that and just, like, speed walk down the road. Like, I'm going to the police. Yeah. And he just walks fucking two miles. Yeah. To Feet the... don't fail me now. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'm telling. <laughs> Oh, oh, the God. coppers will get him someday. <laughs> they get halfway there, turn around. They're like, oh, who cares? Oh, my God. It's not even that bad. Oh, my God. Okay. Barrow failed to see warning signs at a bridge under construction on June 10th while driving with Jones and Parker near Wellington, Texas. Rookie mistake. Yeah. <laughs> the car flipped into a ravine. Sources disagree on whether there was a gasoline fire or if Parker was doused with acid from the car's battery under the floorboards. But she sustained third-degree burns to her right leg, so severe that the muscles contracted and caused the leg to draw up. Jones observed she'd been burned so bad, none of us thought she was going to live. The, uh, the hide on her right leg was gone from hip, from wait, from her hip down to her ankle. I could see the bone in places. Like, oh, oh, man. Yeah. So she lost the Roy and Bonnie mm. tattoo, too. Yeah. 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 Oh, oh. Yeah. All right. Uh. <laughs> okay. Oh, symbolism. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like, this is your life now, girl. Yeah. <laughs> and, yeah, man, he's like, oh, that's kind of gross. Like, you cut off your own toes. Shut up. Yeah, yeah. dude. For real. <laughs> Parker could hardly walk. She either hopped on her good leg or was carried by Barrow. They got help uh, from a nearby farm family, then kidnapped Collingsworth County Sheriff George Corey and City Marshal Paul Hardy, leaving the two of them handcuffed and barbed wire to a tree outside Eric, Oklahoma. The three rendezvoused with Buck and Blanche and hid in a tourist court near Fort Smith, Arkansas, near Parker's, no, nursing Parker's uh, burns. Buck and Jones bungled a robbery and murdered town marshal Henry D. Humphrey in Alma, Arkansas. The criminals had to flee despite Parker's grave condition. In July 1933, the gang checked into the Red Crown Tourist Court south of Plate City, Missouri. It consisted of two brick cabins joined by garages, and the gang rented both. To the south stood the Red Crown Tavern, a a popular restaurant among Missouri Highway Patrolmen, and the gang seemed to go out of their way to draw attention. Blanche registered the party as three guests, but owner Neil Hauser could see five people getting out of the car. He noted that the driver backed into the garage gangster style. (laughs) Gangsta. Yeah, gangster style uh, for a quick getaway. Like, sure. Okay. Blanche paid for their cabins with coins rather than bills and did the same later when buying five dinners and five beers. Oh, I'd hate them. I know. I'd fucking hate I know. them. The look on your face when people put a bag of coins on the counter. It makes me so mad. I, and then I they know. like pour it out on the counter trust and, me, and like, expect me 30. to count it. Trust me, it's $30. Goodbye. <laughs> trust me, it's $30. And then, and yeah. then, and then we oh, count no it way. and it was like two. 
Yeah, yeah it's like two like, and fucking two and bu- uh, fucking like yeah. fucking Jesus Christ. Or the people who like give us rules of change, like you can accept this, right? Like not, we're yeah. not supposed Up to, my but okay. Ass. <laughs> <laughs> Alrighty. So the next day, Hauser noticed that his guests had taped newspapers over the windows of their cabin. Blanche again paid for five meals with coins. Her outfit of jodhpur, riding breeches. I don't know. Whatever. Also attracted attention. They were not typical attire for women in the area, and eyewitnesses still remembered them forty years later. Hauser told Captain William Baxter of the Highway Patrol, a patron of his restaurant, about the group. Barrow and Jones went into town to purchase bandages, crackers, cheese, and atropine sulfate to treat Parker's leg. The druggist uh, contacted Sheriff Holt Coffey, who put the cabins under surveillance. What's his name? Coffey. What was his first name? Holt. Oh, there's a hold. Hold Hold Coffey. Hold (laughs) Coffey. Yeah. That'd be badass. Yeah. Hold coffee and scream. Yeah. Ah. Uh, buy me a coffee. Roll hey, credits. What's the buy me a coffee plug? Uh, uh, buy me a coffee.com slash coffee screen. Good looks. Yes. Uh, da, 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 da. Let's see. Coffee had been alerted by Oklahoma, Texas, and Arkansas law, law enforcement to watch for strangers seeking such supplies. The sheriff contacted Captain Baxter, who called for reinforcements from Kansas City, including an armored car. Sheriff Coffey led a group of officers toward the cabins at 11 p.m. armed with Thompson submachine guns. Mm-hmm. Which, those look like so much fun. I kind of want to shoot them. Yeah. <laughs> you got a big dinner plate. Yeah. Pretty fucking cool. The gang had evaded the law once again, but Buck had been wounded by a bullet that blasted a large hole in the bone of his forehead. What? Hang on. The bullet that blasted a large hole in the bone of his forehead and exposed his injured brain. Like, you're still... Are you kidding me? Is he alive? Yeah. He just puts on a fucking hat? Yeah. He's like, oh, no. He's like, it's Texas. It's, it's like Phineas yeah. Gage. Did he shoot his hat <laughs> off his head? I don't know. Ping! <laughs> 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 <It's a> fucking <laughs> western. <laughs> oh, my God. Uh, and Blanche was nearly blinded in both eyes by glass fragments. In the gunfight that ensued, the forty-five caliber Thompsons proved no match for Barrow's thirty caliber BAR stolen on July 7th from the National Guard Armory at Enid, Oklahoma. The gang escaped when a bullet short-circuited the horn on the armored car, and the police officers mistook it for ceasefire signal. They did not pursue the retreating Barrow vehicle. What? <laughs> they're like, they let them go. Like, they're like, oh, wait, no. Oh, okay. oh wait, they're oh, shit, up. Oh, okay. oh, okay. Oh, okay. Okay. Why? why is, we'll, we'll be over why here. Why is their car getting further away? Why is... Is their car getting smaller? Yeah. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. They were shrink ray. Oh, right. my God. <laughs> we're outgunned. Yeah. Oh. Way to go, Baxter. And they're gone. We're outgunned and outmanned. <laughs> <laughs> you think they're coming back, Cher? <laughs> Fuck. They'll be back. He just goes, frick. Yeah. <laughs> frick. Flip. Flipping. They're flipping. What the fridge? Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> he goes, Fuck. <laughs> Mm. I need a sip of coffee, sorry. He fucking rolls his hat into like a fucking school. <laughs> his cowboy hat, he's just wringing it out. Oh, oh my god. I imagine the sheriff is Yosemite Sam. You have to. Yeah. Yeah. So my biscuits are burning. <laughs> <laughs> this really burns my biscuits. Oh my god. <clears throat> <laughs> the Barrow Gang camped at Dexfield Park, an abandoned amusement park near Dexter, Iowa, on July 24th, 1933. Buck was... What was that noise? My shoe on the It sounded like chair. a dog growling. <laughs> Someone clawing at the door. It's the goat man. Oh, speaking <laughs> of, we have to tell you the ghost story from last time. Excuse yes. me? Yes. What ghost story from last we'll time? We'll tell you. The door. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Mm. Uh, okay. Da, 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 da. Let's see. So they parked at the... They hung out at an abandoned amusement park in Dexter, Iowa on July 24th, 1933. Buck was sometimes semi-conscious, and he even talked and ate, but his massive head wound and loss of blood were so severe that Barrow and Jones dug a grave for him. Residents noticed their bloody bandages, and officers determined that the campers were the Barrow gang. Local police officers and approximately 100 spectators surrounded the group, and the Barrows soon came under fire. Barrow, Parker, and Jones escaped on foot. Buck was shot in the back, and he and his wife were captured by the officers. Buck died of his head wound and pneumonia after surgery five days later at King's Daughters Hospital in Perry, Iowa. For the next six weeks, the remaining perpetrators ranged far 
a field from their usual area of operations west to Colorado, north to Minnesota, southeast to Mississippi, yet they continued to commit armed robberies. They restocked their arsenal when Barrow and Jones robbed an armory at Plateville, Illinois. Platteville, whatever. On August 20th, acquiring three BARs, handguns, and a large quantity of ammunition. By early September, the gang risked a run to Dallas to see their families for the first time in four months. Jones parted company with them, continuing to Houston where his mother had moved. He was arrested there without incident on November 16th and returned to Dallas. Through the autumn, Barrow committed several robberies with small-time local accomplices, while his family and Parkers attended to their considerable, considerable medical needs. Yeah, like, they're fucked up. Yeah. yeah, they're fucking limping around. Yeah, just... Last leg. Limping for days. Like a sick dog. Yeah. <laughs> On November 22nd, they narrowly evaded arrest while trying to meet with family members near Sowers, Texas. Dallas Sheriff Smoot Schmid... Yeah, soak it in. Schmoot? Schmoot? Schmid? Schmoot? Schmoot? Schmid? I have, no, I have no words. Yeah. Cahoot? All I, have, all I have to say is Harryman. Okay. Harryman. <laughs> Harryman. Maybe it's pronounced Harryman, but it's Harry. That's hey, Whatever. That sounds so funny because it sounds okay. like you're trying to get it past the person <laughs> yeah. and you're like, no, no, no. No, no, I hear no, no, that. no, no. Deputy that. Bob Alcorn and Deputy Ted Hinton lay in wait nearby. As Barrow drove up, he sensed a trap and drove past his family's car at which point schmid and his deputies stood up and opened fire with machine guns and a bar the family members in the crossfire were not hit but a bar bullet passed through the car striking the legs of both barrow and parker they escaped later that night oh my so they God. So they're, not only they hurt they're, they're fucking shot now they're like, fucking unkillable dude yeah like a cockroach. and even that's not bolted down they're taken yeah the fact yeah. that they got a would you say they got a like a, a coast guard rifle what was it that's, what? What was the rifle they got? Like the BAR? The, the BAR? It was the... Hang on. Sorry. To... It's the Browning automatic rifle. No, but Thank where you. did they yeah. get it? They got it from like a fucking They just stole vehicle? it from like an armories and stuff. Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. Um, well, see. like it was like back in like the 30s too. Like nothing was ever like secured correctly because they were like, oh, like everyone in the world is a peach... In, well, Bonnie, in, yeah. in the sh- yeah. sunshine day. But, like, Bonnie day. and Clyde were seen as, like, Robin Hoods. Like, they yeah. were, like, people loved yeah. them. And they can't, like, they didn't have surveillance cameras back then. Like, they no. were, like, no. they were, like... It was the Great Depression. Like, they were... Everyone like, was, like, everyone like, was fuck the man. The They're, like, fuck the man. Read my poems. I'm gonna go rob some shit. How funny would it be, though, and, if, like... In, but honestly, in the... I would love to, like, have an archive of Bonnie's poems and read some of them. There are... They exist. Really? Yes, you can... Yeah. Hell fucking yeah. I am sure they do. I'm, ins- I, I'm sorry. I write poetry. I, I don't really talk about it on the podcast, but I do. I'm insane when it comes to poetry. <laughs> she loves it. Yes, I do. You, uh, should add, you should read that sock one. That one. The sock one's really good. The, the, the one you showed me before. Oh, the, the, adult, love, yeah. the, the adult Christmas haiku. I don't remember it being adult. Yeah, it's, it's titled Adult Christmas. Yeah. Okay. Oh, when I think of adult Christmas, I think of... Okay, well, uh, shut up. Okay. What do you think of the- I think of Jake Gyllenhaal from Jarhead. Oh. Did you see Jarhead? Oh. Of course I did. Yeah. Speaking of which, the Fuck road- Roadhouse. The, Fuck uh, the tra- I'm so mad. The trailer is out. Um, I was watching a video on YouTube today, and that no. came up, and I was like, I can't, because I no. wait for my show on Tuesdays. There's only one. There is only one. There's only one. There's no Ugh. fucking person. There's no one and in you know Hollywood. And Conor McGregor is like, he's putting, are you- f- He's like the, now this is my thing. I hope he's the bodyguard. Sorry for the sidebar. Oh no, it's fine. I hope he's the bodyguard of the bad guy. I hope he's not the he's bad the guy. He's the bad guy. That makes no fucking sense. Why have lackeys then? Dude, you're like the guy. You could fight for your... I don't know. Uh, and apparently, like, Jake Gyllenhaal did, like, some choreographed fight. On I saw some, that. Like, they, oh, yeah. yeah. I watched that pay-per-view. We know what you did to Taylor Swift. We don't forgive you. What do you do? Uh, we'll talk about it later. It's you. No. We know it all too well, Jake Gyllenhaal. All too well? We know it all too well. Yeah, th- this is the this is okay. the adult Christmas haiku really quick. Um, I really need socks. My feet are so very cold all of the damn time. Thank you. That's cute. That uh, is really cute. It's a haiku. <laughs> it's a haiku. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Well, back to Pawnee and Clyde. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. We were in the middle of something. Yes. <laughs> the poetry section is now done. Yes. Well, this is, I mean, hey. She Piper's Poetry Corner. P- Piper's <gasps> Poetry Corner. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> I have stars all around my head. Chris's 
crap <laughs> corner. <laughs> it's the corner. I show. It's like the you I show shit the, in the corner. I show the audience my my kitty box. My yeah. Aww. My cat. What is it called? Cat cat box. Yeah. yeah. Jess's jewel journey. <laughs> and I don't bury. I leave it wide open. Jess's joke. I don't. I, I don't know. Jess's oh. jerk. Jess, yeah. Jess's jerk, <laughs> Jess is jerk of the week. Yeah, jerk of the week. It's my DMs. <laughs> yeah, you're like, yeah. But week. I'm the jerk. It's always me being the jerk. Okay, you, yeah. <laughs> jerk of the week. <laughs> Nailed it. Oh this my next God. segment. We're going to have to have stingers. It's always just me being like, oh, God. All right. Cat- I was like, hey, what time is it? You're like, fuck you. Cat facts. <laughs> Oh yes, yes. Maybe, maybe uh-huh. the real jerk was the friends we made along the way. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> all right, let's go. All right. Oh my god, we'll be here all fucking night. Bonnie yeah. Harriman. All right. On November 28th, the Dallas grand jury delivered a murder indictment against Parker and Barrow for the killing in January of that year, nearly ten months earlier, of Tarrant County Deputy Malcolm Davis. It was Parker's first warrant for murder. Hmm. On January 16th, 1934, Barrow ar- uh, orchestrated the escape of Hamilton, Methvin, and several others in the East Ham breakout. The brazen raid generated negative publicity from for Texas, and Barrow seemed to have achieved what historian Phillips suggests was his overriding goal, revenge on the Texas Department of Corrections. You, No one made you cut off your toes, bro. For real. Barrow gang member Joe Palmer shot Major Joe Krausen during his escape, and Krausen died a few days later in the hospital. This attack attracted the full power of the Texas and federal government to the manhunt for Barrow and Parker. As Krausen struggled for life, prison chief Lee Simmons reportedly promised him that all persons involved in the breakout would be hunted down and killed. All of them eventually were except for Methvin, who preserved his life by turning on the gang and setting up the ambush of Barrow and Parker. Yeah. yeah. Is that what the um, the Highwaymen movie mm-hmm. kind of about? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The Texas Department of Corrections contacted former Texas Ranger Captain Frank Hammer and pers- uh, persuaded him to hunt down the Barrow gang. He is retired, but his commission had not expired. He accepted the assignment as a Texas Highway Patrol officer, secondarily assigned to the prison system as a special investigator, and was given a specific given the specific task of taking down the Barrow Gang. Like you only got one job, Frank. Get it (laughs) done. Don't fuck it up. Yeah. Remember. Lay the hammer down. Yeah, it's all in the wrist. (laughs) (laughs) Hammer was tall, burly, and taciturn. An, it's hammer not know time. His name. It's, it's hammer uh, time. <laughs> I think I started tuning out. I can't okay. handle it. It's fine. I can't handle these. Uh, hammer was tall, burly, and taciturn, unimpressed by authority, and driven by an inflexible adherence to right and what he thinks is right. For 20 years, he had been feared and admired throughout Texas as the walking embodiment of the one... The one riot, one ranger ethos. He had acquired a formidable reputation as a result of spe- several spectacular captures and the shooting of a number of Texas criminals. He was he was officially credited with 53 kills and suffered 17 wounds. Prison boss Simmons always said publicly that Hammer had been his first choice, although there is evidence that he first approached two other rangers, both of whom declined because they were reluctant to shoot a woman. Like, no, no, no. And I, I, I wanted you all along, but like... <laughs> I never I, hesitate to shoot a woman. I know. Never. Starting... Oh, my God. <laughs> Starting on February 10th, Hammer became the constant shadow of Barrow and Parker, living out of his car just a town or two behind them. Three of Hammer's four brothers were also Texas Rangers. Brother Harrison was the best shot of the four, but Frank was considered the most tenacious. On Easter Sunday, April 1st, 1934... At the intersection of Route 114 and Dover, oh, I almost said Dover Road. I was like, oh my god, that's so. <gasps> and Dove uh-huh. and Dove Road, near Grapevine, Texas, now South Lake, Highway Patrolman H. D. Murphy and Edward Bryant Wheeler stopped their motorcycles, thinking a motorist needed assistance. Barrow and Methvin or Parker opened fire with a shotgun and handgun, killing both officers. An eyewitness account said that Parker fired the fatal shots, but this story received widespread coverage. Uh, Methvin later claimed that he fired the first shot after mistakenly assuming that Barrow wanted the officers killed. Barrow joined in, firing at Patrolman Murphy. 
During the spring season, the grapevine killings were recounted in exaggerated detail, affecting public perception. All four Dallas daily papers seized on the story told by the eyewitness, a farmer who claimed to have seen Parker laugh at the way Murphy's head bounced like a rubber ball on the ground. Oh, my God. Yeah, as she shot him. World star. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The stories claim that police found a cigar butt with tiny teeth marks, supposedly those of Parker. What a baddie. Several days later, Murphy's fiance wore her intended wedding dress to his funeral. Oh, poor girl. Attracting photos and newspaper coverage. The eyewitness's ever-changing story was soon discredited, but the massive negative publicity increased the public clamor for the extermination of the Barrow Gang. Mm -hmm. The outcry galvanized the authorities into action, and Highway Patrol boss L.G. Fares offered a reward of $1,000, equivalent to $21,000 in 2022, Mm -hmm. um, for the dead bodies of the Grapevine Slayers, not their capture, just the bodies. The Texas uh, Texas Governor oh. Ma Ferguson added another reward of five hundred dollars for each of the two killers, which meant that for the first time there was a specific price on Bonnie's head, since she was so widely believed to have shot H. D. Murphy. Hmm. Public hostility increased five days later when Barrow and Methvin murdered sixty-year-old Constable William Cal Campbell a widower and father near Commerce, Oklahoma. They kidnapped Commerce Police Chief Percy Boyd, crossed the state line into Kansas, and let him go, giving him a clean shirt, a few dollars, and a request from Parker to tell the world that she did not smoke cigars. (laughs) (laughs) That's pretty fucking funny. Stop it! Uh, Boyd identified both Barrow and Parker to authorities, but he never learned uh, Methvin's name. I always want to call him Melvin. It's it's the way my eyes just... Yeah, my eyes are tired. Methvin. Could, could you like I, I love her priorities though like i'm like, not a smoker like it was a picture i'm a killer i'm not a smoker yeah like i have standards <laughs> i'm a lady and she's pointing a gun i'm a it's lady not ladylike <laughs> yeah yeah well she's pointing a gun uh, oh my God. the resultant arrest warrant for the campbell murder spe- uh, specified clyde barrow bonnie parker and john doe Historian Knight writes, for the first time, Bonnie was seen as a killer, actually pulling the trigger, just like Clyde. Whenever chance, whatever chance she had for clemency had been reduced. The Dallas Journal ran a cartoon of, the, of its editorial page showing an empty electric chair and a sign on it saying, reserved, adding the words Clyde and Bonnie. Mm. Okay. On May 3rd... Thir- uh, um, no. By May 1934, Barrow had 16 warrants outstanding against him for multiple counts of robbery, auto theft, theft, escape, assault, and murder in four states. Hammer, who had begun tracking the gang on February 12th, led the posse. He had studied the gang's movements and found that they swung in a circle skirting the edges of five Midwestern states, exploiting the state line rule that prevented officers from presuming, pursuing a fugitive in another jurisdiction. Burrow was consistent in his movements, so Hammer charted his path and predicted where he would go. The gang's itinerary centered on family visits, and they were due to see Methvin's family in Louisiana. Unbeknownst to Hammer, Barrow had designated Methvin's parents' residence as a rendezvous in case they were separated. Methvin had become separated from the rest of the gang in Shreveport. Hammer's uh, posse was composed of six men, Texas officers, Hammer, Hinton, Alcorn, and BM Manny Galt, and Louisiana officers Henderson, Jordan, and Prentice Morel Oakley. On May 21st, the four posse members from Texas were in Shreveport when they learned that Barrow and Parker were planning to visit Ivy Methvin in Bienville Parish that evening. The full posse uh, set up an ambush along Louisiana State Highway 154 south of Gibsland towards sales. Hinted recounted that the lawmen were in place by 9 p.m. and waited through the whole next day. That sounds awful. May 22nd mm-hmm. with no sign of the perpetrators. Other accounts said that the officers set up on the evening of May 22nd, which I they were probably there for over a day. Oh, yeah. Like they're they're not gonna miss it. Do you think that when that guy busts people, he says mm-hmm. it's hammer time? I hope he does. As he cocks the gun, it's hammer time. Cocks the hammer of the gun? 
Yeah, well, yeah, sure. There's hammers everywhere. <laughs> There's a lot of hammers. A lot of hammers. A lot more of ha- cocking, more hammers. hammers than a hardware a lot of store. Cummies, do you a lot think, of hairy man. Do you think? Oh my god. Do you think at his house, he has like a chandelier that is made of hammers? Definitely. Probably made of guns. He probably says to his wife, he's probably like, it's hammer time. It's hammer time. Yeah. She knows exactly. Uh-huh. She gets the box she of nails out. Yeah. She knows. Yeah. <laughs> uh, at approximately 9.15 a.m. on May 23rd, the posse was still concealed in the bushes and almost ready to give up when they heard a vehicle approaching at a high speed. In their first official report, they stated they had uh, persuaded Methvin to position his truck on the shoulder of the road that morning. They hoped Barrow would stop to speak with him, putting his vehicle close to the posse's position in the bushes. The vehicle proved to be the Ford V8 with Barrow at the wheel, and he slowed down as hoped. The sixth lawman opened fire while the vehicle was still moving. Oakley first, Oakley fired first, probably before any order to do so, which, don't do that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Barrow, no trigger. Barrow was shot in the head and died instantly from Oakley's first shot and hinted reported <clears throat> hearing Bar- uh, Parker scream. The officers fired about 130 rounds, emptying each of their weapons into the car, the two had survived uh, several bullet wounds over the years in their confrontations with the law. On this day, any one of the several of wait, on this day, any one of several of Bonnie and Clyde's wounds could have been the cause of death. According to the statements made by Hinton and Alcorn, each of each of us six officers had a shotgun and an automatic rifle and pistols. We opened fire with automatic rifles. They were emptied before the car even got with us. Damn. Yeah. Devil's reject style. Yeah. Then we used shotguns. There was smoke coming from the car, and it looked like it was on fire. After shooting the shotguns, we emptied the pistols at the car, which had passed us, and ran into a ditch about 50 yards down the road. It almost turned over. And then we shot a bazooka at it. We kept shooting at the car even after it stopped. We weren't taking any That's chances. That's crazy. Actual film footage taken by one of the deputies immediately after the amb- ambush shows 112 bullet holes in the vehicle of which around one quarter struck the car uh, couple. Like, that's, they took a lot. Yeah. The official report by Parish Coroner J.L. Wade listed 17 entrance wounds on Barrow's body and 26 on that of Parker, including several headshots to each and one that had severed Barrow's spinal column. Undertaker C.F. Boots Bailey had difficulty embalming the bodies because of all the bullet holes. Which, oof. It's like, it's, a, like, it's, it's like a pasta strainer. It's like <laughs> gel. It's just a fucking pile of jelly. Yeah. The deafened officers inspected the vehicle and discovered an arsenal, including stolen automatic rifles, sawed off semi-automatic shotguns, assorted handguns, and several thousand rounds of ammunition, along with 15 sets of license plates from various states. Hammer stated, I hate to bust the cap. Oh, okay. I hate to bust I, the cap. In your I ass, hate to bust the cap time. on a woman, especially when she was sitting down. However, it would if it would if it would wouldn't have been her. It would have been us. What a Wor- gentleman. <laughs> yeah. Who said that? Hammer. Hammer. That's yeah. fucking dope. <laughs> Word of the deaths quickly got around when Hammer, Jordan, Oakley, and Hinton drove into town to telephone their bosses. A crowd soon gathered at the spot. Galt and Alcorn were left to guard the bodies, but they lost control of the jostling, curious throng. A woman cut off bloody locks of Parker's hair and pieces of her dress, which were subsequently sold as souvenirs. Hinton returned to find a man trying to cut off Barrow's trigger finger and was sickened by what was occurring. Oh, God. Like, That's why? Fucking why? Like Black Friday. Yeah. Like, I could see, like, oh, my God, there's a, a shell casing. Like, but, yeah, I'll take that. But, like, give me your finger. Yeah, I want her upper yeah. lip. See, what the fuck? Like, I wanted the, oh, I wanted those toes. They're already gone. Yeah. <laughs> Where the, Man. Wait. Oh my god. I could have swore. You know, people did get out though. They were collecting, you know, shell ca- uh, casings, like pieces of glass from like mm. the windshield and all that. Um. Oh god. One man. He opened his pocket knife and he reached in the car and he tried to cut off Clyde's left ear. My god. Yeah. He tried to Van Gogh. So Hinton. He's still alive. Yeah. <laughs> Ow. Oh. <laughs> the fuck why won't you die it's like i was just shot it's like the scene in family guy where peter like hurts his knee yeah he's just ow. seething ow he's just sitting there breathing <laughs> and then fucking Lu- uh what is her name lois is yeah. like holding her titty like she's got like, <laughs> a mouthful of sugar okay so the posse towed the ford with the dead body still inside 
to the Conger Furniture Store and Funeral Parlor in downtown Arcadia, Louisiana. Like, there's a funeral parlor attached to a furniture store. Yeah. So you're like, I really want that hutch, and also that's that that's that caskets for grandma. <laughs> yeah, they're just caskets, like, but they advertise them as like coffee tables. Like, you could put a yeah, put a tablecloth yeah, on it. It's a, fine. Put a coffee in this. Rolls off. You could totally put a plate. Just, you could totally rest a plate on that. It just goes and just yeah. slides off the top. And it's you devil's as a bed. Just yeah, open yeah. it. Just open it up. You could Beautiful. take the lid off and use the shell as a bookshelf. Sure can. Yes. <laughs> you sure can. Preliminary embalming was done by Bailey in a small preparation room in the back of the furniture store, as it was common for furniture stores and undertakers to share the same space. Okay, well, we just learned something new. There we go. Hmm. The population of Northwest Louisiana town reportedly swelled from 2,000 to 12,000 within hours. Carries throngs arrived by train, horseback, buggy, and plane. Beer normally sold for 15 cents a bottle, but it jumped to 25 cents and sandwiches quickly sold out. Henry Barrow identified his son's body and then sat weeping in a rocking chair in the furniture section. Fuck. Yikes. That's actually kind of sad. I feel bad for him. Like, yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, H.D. Darby was an undertaker at the McClure Funeral Parlor, and Sophia Stone was a home demonstration agent, both from nearby Ruston. Both of them came to Arcadia to identify the bodies because the Barrow Gang, the Barrow Gang, had kidnapped them. So it's like, well, they kidnapped me. I know what they look like. I'll just, I'll, I'll yeah. do it. Yeah. Um, they gave me money for a payphone. <laughs> Parker Idiots. reportedly had laughed when she discovered that Darby was an undertaker. She remarked that maybe someday he would be working on her. Darby did insist Bailey in the embalming. Uh, let's see here. Bonnie and Clyde wished to be buried side by side, but the Parker family would not allow it. Her mother wanted to grant her final wish to be brought home, but the mob surrounding the Parker house made that impossible. More than 20,000 attended Parker's funeral, and her family had difficulty reaching her gravesite. Which, that's fucked 20, up. 20,000? Yeah. That's like, pretty fucking substantial. Maybe you're the family. Like, yeah. Get out of the way. Yeah. Um, trash everywhere. It looks yeah. Like a fucking Madison Square Garden show. Yeah. yeah. Parker's services were held on May 26th. Alan Campbell recalled that flowers came from everywhere, including some with cards allegedly from Pretty Boy Floyd and John Dillinger. The largest floral tribute was sent by a group of Dallas City newsboys. The sudden end of Bonnie and Clyde sold 500,000 newspapers in Dallas alone. Parker was buried in the uh, Fish Trap Cemetery, although her body was moved in 1945 to the new Crown Hill Cemetery in Dallas. Thousands of people gathered outside both Dallas funeral homes, hoping for a chance to view the bodies. Barrow's private funeral was held at sunset on May 25th. He was buried in Western Heights uh, Cemetery in Dallas next to his brother Marvin. The Barrow brothers shared a, a single granite marker with their names on it and an epitaph selected by Clyde, gone but not forgotten. Uh, let's see here. The American National Insurance Company of Galveston, Texas, paid the life insurance policies in full on Barrow and Parker. Since then, the policy payouts had changed to exclude payouts in cases of deaths caused by criminal act. That ins- yeah, like, mm-hmm. that, no, they shouldn't have done that. Okay. Yeah, Bonnie, like, she, like, she sent poems and, like, pictures to the newspapers. Like the Zodiac? Kind of, but, like, she did it because she's like, no, we're good. We're good. Um... So, yeah, that is the story of Bonnie and Clyde. I know that it was a lot of information. Yes. Um, the most informative show on Spotify, by the way. Hell yeah. 100%. Yeah. We are so smart. Our minds are beautiful. Yeah, go, li- go listen to uh, yeah. whatever else is out there. I don't even know. We actually just share one brain cell. <laughs> well, someone yeah. that has two shows, I, I don't watch a lot of podcasts. I, mm. I just... Well, or listen. Well, yeah, that's what I, yeah, same thing. It's like sometimes you got to deprive yourself and sure. approach it from a different yeah. angle. Yeah. You know? uh, if you would like to follow us on Instagram, it is Coffee and Scream Pod. We are also on Twitter at C Scream Pod. That's C the letter Scream Pod. Um, I am on Twitter at It's Just G. Um, we are. Do you want to give your Twitter or no? Um, you just find me through Jess. Yeah, she's there. Yeah. Chris is there too. Sometimes you'll find him. I'm, I'm definitely I'm, I'm alive. Up. I'm using Twitter more. He's he's yeah. starting to. I uh, would advertise my Instagram, but my handle has my last name in it, so no. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, you can find Chris. 
twitch.tv forward slash one time theater. Mm-hmm. Tuesdays at 7, uh, a show about movies and more. We watched Dracula, um, the Keanu Reeves, Gary Oldman one, and that was actually pretty dope. I liked it. Mm-hmm. I've been putting that off for a, a while. I yeah. finally watched it. Good. I thought it was just going to be Gary Oldman being really dramatic in the dark. Being but, Gary Oldman. But then he turns into like a fucking werewolf and then he turns into a bat. Yeah. I was like, yeah, it was pretty, mm-hmm. pretty fucking cool. Yeah. And then Keanu Reeves, he was actually very tame in that movie. Mm-hmm. It wasn't like what you'd expect. Mm. But yeah. Okay. Uh, Twitch.tv forward slash one time theater. Tuesdays at seven. Mm-hmm. Yes. Um, we are also on buymeacoffee.com slash coffee scream if you would like to support the show. Um, I think that'll do it for this week. Yep. Thank you guys for hanging out. Yes. So lock your doors and stay safe. Bye. Bye. Bye.